I'm Helen Duncan and I'm here at Plextech RFI with consultant engineer Robert Smith. Rob has several years experience in the design of high efficiency gallium nitride PAs, both in his work here at Plextech RFI and previously as the focus of his PhD research. Rob, can you tell me what makes GAN technology such a good choice for solid state RF and microwave PAs? There are two reasons for this. First is the fact that GAN transistors have a higher breakdown voltage than competing RF solid state technologies. The higher bias voltage means that for a given output power, the impedances into which the transistor needs to operate will be higher. This helps to reduce current losses in the output matching network, to improve amplifier efficiency, and to allow the implementation of broader band designs. The second key advantage is that they can operate with a higher channel temperature while still demonstrating high reliability. This higher junction temperature allows GAN transistors to operate at higher power densities without damage. Presumably the higher operating voltages and RF power levels also bring design challenges that must be addressed. They do. Matching and biasing uh, decoupling capacitors need to withstand the combined DC and peak RF voltage swing. It's also important to use capacitors with adequate RF power dissipation ratings because although the losses of high quality RF capacitors are small, they're not zero and the high RF power levels that can be generated by GAN PAs mean we need to take this into account. The power dissipation capability also needs to be derated with increasing temperature. Careful choice of PCB material, metallization, and layout is also vital to ensure that the DC and RF power levels can be handled. The tracks carrying DC bias need the appropriate combination of metal thickness and width to handle the DC current when the amplifier is operating at saturation. Most designs appreciate this, but what's sometimes overlooked is that the tracks carrying RF signals need to be wide enough to handle the power. If the tracks are too narrow, that narrow they can peel away from the PCB or even vaporise. Conductor thickness does not help much at RF frequencies due to skin effect. What about the GAN devices themselves? Are there any special techniques for using them effectively? Yes, there are. Although GAN transistors can provide impressive efficiency performance, the high output power capabilities mean that they can still be required to dissipate significant amounts of power. This PA here can produce 125 watts at 75% efficiency, but even this uh, produces 42 watts of heat, which needs to be conducted away from the transistors as effectively as possible. For SMT devices, the PCB can be a significant contributor to the channel to ambient thermal impedance. We've used two approaches to great effect. This is a copper coin uh, PCB that we've used, uh, and this works very nicely from a thermal point of view, but they present their own challenges in terms of manufacture and component mounting. Uh, copper filled via boards have a higher thermal impedance, but are cheaper and more straightforward to manufacture. It seems that there could be a risk in measuring PAs with such a high output power capability, and that this could damage expensive test equipment. Definitely. Uh, any large signal test setup uh, requires sufficient attenuation to protect the measurement equipment. Even when measuring small signal S parameters, uh, protecting the VNA must be considered. GAN transistors have a very high maximum uh, gain at low frequencies, and if this is not properly decoupled, then the PA can oscillate. We take great care when we first bias buy, buy up our PAs to set low current limits on the power supplies and then gradually wind them up. This limits the maximum power that the PA could output in the event of oscillation. We can also measure PAs down to minus 40 degrees C, where the maximum gain is even higher and the risk of oscillation is even greater. GAN is clearly a great technology for power amplifiers. Should we be using GAN wherever possible? Not necessarily. Um, in a multi-stage power amplifier, GAN is ideally suited to the output stage, uh, but the driver stages could be still implemented in gallium arsenide uh, for a more cost-effective solution. For example, we recently designed a single-stage X-band PA on UMS's process, which took advantage of GAN to deliver high power and efficiency, but could be driven by standard gallium arsenide parts. We also have experience of using a discrete GAN transistor in a package with a gallium arsenide input matching chip. This combines the performance advantages of GAN with the cost-effectiveness of a passive gas process. We envisage GAN being used in more and more application areas as the cost further decreases, but for now, uh, it should be used where it offers clear advantages over competing technologies, high power amplifiers being one of these cases.